Communicating with others, it can be tricky. But what about when we're communicating with artificial intelligence? Do the same principles apply, or is it something completely different? Today, we're talking with Impact's trainer and AI expert, Brianna Walgenbach. How's it going, Brianna? It's going. It's going. It's a good day to talk AI, oh, Austin. I'm, I'm excited to get into it. We're excited to hear your take communicating with AI. Is it similar to how you communicate with humans, or is it something completely different? You know, I think, as most things are with content marketing, is a big old, it depends. So the way I like to think about this is, can you explain something in a super like simplistic manner to someone? Of course. Would you ask something in a super simplistic manner? Not always. But if you were talking to, say, a five-year-old, would that look different than if you were talking to a 35-year-old? Of course, it would look different, right? You're talking to a five-year-old versus a semi-grown adult at 35. So when you're talking to a child, you break things down differently. You use smaller words. You use more descriptive words, knowing that the individual you're talking to might not really be speaking the same language as you. So <clears throat> we want to be as detailed as we can be, but also kind of rule of thumb, treat your AI like a five-year-old. Don't leave any detail out. Don't assume that it knows something about your business or about your brand. And the other thing I will say on how to speak to AI, another, it depends, um, but depending on who you talk to, you may hear some different things. And I'll use a couple impactors as an example. Myself, I have found, unless I'm very polite, <laughs> I don't always get what I'm looking for. Now, on the flip side of that, if you ask Mandy York, another trainer that we have here, she finds the complete opposite. And if she is overly direct, not aggressive, but overly direct and factual, she gets a better result than being polite. And so the question is, well, why the heck is that? Like, if you guys are using the same AI tool, shouldn't it be the same? And so if we use ChatGPT as an example, since most people know what that is, or at least have heard of it, every time you open a new chat feature or a new chat window, if you will, is a different bot, right? So the bot that you're working with, say, if I'm asking it to write me a strong, compelling meta description, and I ask ChatGPT that, but I open another chat, to ask a separate question treat those as two different five-year-olds because they are two different bots, right? Wow, that's super interesting um, because that is really similar to people because you talk to different people in different ways too, where, yep. you know, if you're talking to one person, you might need to say things a certain way and then talking to a different person, say things in a diff completely different way, like you said, to get those results. That's crazy. I, I did not know that and that's super cool. I always do say please and thank you. It feels a little strange, but it's I do too. And honestly, when I don't, I like don't get as good of results. So I'm like, all right, I know. Give me the pleases and the thanks. <laughs> Is there a difference between prompting, the word like prompting when people are prompting an AI, or training? Because you're people talk about training an AI bot, or is that the same thing as just prompting? Yeah. I think surface level it's very easy to assume that they're the same things, right? Because if I say, oh yeah, I'm doing some prompt engineering, that sounds really glitz and glamoury, right? But on the flip side of that, if I say, hey, I just trained this AI bot, that's also impressive, but what the heck do they mean, right? So if I were to prompt you, Austin, with a question about what you ate for lunch, what would you tell me? I had some rice and curry. Rice and curry, okay. Did that interaction involve me training you in any way on what to make for lunch or what diet to, you know, focus on? No, no. I was prompting you with a question mm. that prompted you to respond to me, mm. right? Very different than if you and I had a conversation where I trained you on best practices for building a healthy diet right? Two very different scenarios. So when we think about how we speak or train or prompt our AI tool or tools of choice, 
They are very different, right? Prompting is saying, hey, I've got this thing. I'm going to ask you this thing. I'm going to prompt you with some information and ask you to do a thing for me. Training on the other end is that you are feeding it, right? You're doing something that is changing that bot so that when you do get to whatever thing you want to do and you give it a prompt, it's got some background knowledge that it's already built up on so that you can get exactly what you're looking for. So for example, here at Impact, we're building a content reviewer, right? Because content is a big deal in a lot of things, but specifically they ask you answer. And so we want our clients to be able to utilize AI for many things, but for some actionable feedback for their content that they're creating. And for us to do that, we fed one of the chat GPTs, one of the many GPTs that are out there. We fed it our content. We fed it our website. We fed it the actual book they ask you answer. That's training because we took that extra time to feed it and make it have the knowledge that we need it to have for us to say, hey, can you review this big five cost article based on the best practices of a big five cost article in They Ask You Answer? If I just did that prompt with no training, it would scour the internet and find you know, what it thought I was talking about, but that might not be what I was looking for. So that's the difference is you're giving it, right? You're feeding it that info you need versus prompting. You're asking a thing and then saying, use whatever resources you need to figure out said thing that I'm asking you to do. That makes a lot of sense. And that cleared it up for me because I thought they were kind of interchangeable, but I've heard people talking about them differently. So that's super helpful. When yeah. you do have, when you aren't speaking or typing with an AI tool, there are times where I personally feel like I have explained it so well what I need. Like I'm talking to a five-year-old. I've gone the extra mile more than I even needed to explain. And the tool still just doesn't get it. And I'll explain mm -hmm. it again. And it just still doesn't understand what I'm trying to say, even though I feel like I'm being super clear. What are some things you can do to troubleshoot when you have those kinds of instances? Well, first thing is tr try not to get too frustrated. <laughs> Because we've all been there before where we're like, isn't that supposed to be saving me time? I asked you the thing, give me the thing I need. And you know, if you would have asked me this question, probably like way back in the old ages of like Q1 2023, I would have said, try again, try that prompt again, ask again, ask more specifically, ask in a different way, utilize what emotion you're looking for. Keep asking is what I would have told you. What we have learned since then is you're going to reach a limit as to what you're going to get out of that bot. So let's say ChatGPT is the tool that you're using and you give it a prompt and you don't get what you want. So you say, actually, you know, that's not what I was looking for. Try again this time. Insert something that makes it more targeted to what you're looking for. And you still don't get what you want. So you try again. And it, you can go on and on for kind of forever and still not land on what you're wanting, which can cause you to close that computer and choose to just do it yourself, right? And it's frustrating. So what should you do? Open up a new bot, give that one, just call it quits. Don't let yourself sit in the back and forth for too long. Truthfully, with the advancements, we're not working with the same functionality we were working with back in January, 2023, right? even though it is only almost December of 2023, that's a lot of time. Not a lot of time blanketly, but a lot of time that OpenAI has been grinding their gears and really working hard behind the scenes to give us end users what we need, and they're only getting better. Today's chat GPT is the worst it's going to be. Tomorrow, it's going to be better, even if there's no updates that have been thrown out there, because it's always learning. When we're prompting it, when we're training it, it's learning from what we're putting in. And so if you find yourself getting in that cycle of like, now try again, this time more this way, try it a couple times, but feel free to give yourself permission to give up on that one. You might've got a bad bot, open up a new chat, try again. That's awesome. Yeah, no, that makes a lot of sense. Um, and you can kind of just, when you get frustrated, remember it's just a five-year-old. And then you can go yes. ask a different five-year-old the same question and maybe they'll, they'll get it right. 
Um, if yes. someone's really excited, they, they heard our conversation today, they haven't messed around too much with artificial intelligence. What's something they can do today to actionably start getting comfortable communicating with AI? Honestly, this is going to sound probably too simple, but just start and start with where you're comfortable. Because a lot of times, especially if, if someone who's listening is not an individual who actually has played around with chat GPT or any tools, there's so many dang tools. It's so easy to just get lost in the, well, how do I know what I'm supposed to do? How do I know what's bad? How do I know what's good? Even starting that thought process and starting to look into some tools that directly pertain to your role day by day, you got to start somewhere. So start where you're comfortable and do a little bit more every week. Not necessarily a little bit more every day. Don't overload yourself and try to think like, oh, I'm going to go all in on this. I'm going to learn all of this stuff. I'm going to figure out everything with AI. Good luck but it's going to take more than just a little things here and there. But that's where you start. You got to start where you are. Be real with yourself and say, hey, this AI stuff, I've been hearing a lot about it and I've been kind of sitting in the background watching. It's about time I step in and get in the game. And truthfully, I would say the first tool to start with, chat GPT. Truthfully, Austin, what I'm finding is I always come back and land on ChatGPT with all the other tools that are out there, depending on what I'm trying to do in terms of accuracy and things I can actually use. I, so far, knock on wood, there might be a new tool that pops out tomorrow that we're you know unaware of, but as it sits right now, I find myself coming back to ChatGPT all the time. And it has that comfort level that we're used to with search engines. Type in a thing, press enter, see what you get. That practice isn't different. The results are different, but that practice should put you, if you're brand new, kind of within your comfort zone a little bit. Um, that would definitely be an easy, I don't want to say well, easy <laughs> place to start. <laughs> yeah, that makes sense. And, uh, you know, it feels like you said, chat GPT feels very natural to what we're used to doing on a computer. And one way I found when I first started, a good way to kind of get used to it and get excited was I found that work things were a little intimidating. So I was like, I'm just going to help it plan my weekly diet. I entered some things that I was allergic to, some things that I liked, some things I had in my house. I was like, can you come up with a meal plan for this week? And that was kind of fun because it didn't have like consequences if you do it wrong. It, it was just fun to do. So seeing that happen got me inspired to do some other things. So that's something you can always do as well, I feel like. Yeah, that's a great idea. And then you can kind of get comfortable knowing that like, I'm just talking about recipes here, or I'm just talking about Christmas shopping. One like bout of nervousness, which is fair, that I see a lot of our clients have is what happens with the data once I put it in there? And that's a real fear and a good one to have because we want to be cautious about what we're sharing, especially if we work in an industry that is high confidentiality, right? So I think that's a great, great suggestion, Austin, because you're right. It is more intimidating when we're talking about the professional side of our life. I don't want to do anything wrong as it pertains to work. But if I get a goofy or wonky recipe that I don't end up using, you know, there's nothing wrong or scary about that. So yeah, start in your personal life. That's a great idea, Austin. Yeah. Well, thanks for talking with us. I know I learned a lot today and you cleared up a lot of misconceptions I had. So I'm sure a lot of the viewers uh, had that as well. So thanks for talking with us course. See you on the next one. I'll see ya. When you and your AI tools are on the same page, your business will see the results. Need help with your AI strategy or growing your business? Reach out at impactplus.com today to start working with an expert just like Brianna.